Hi guys, this is Mike Hibbert back with another Python Django tutorial for you. And this time round we're going to look at the subject of how to take payments through credit cards using Stripe. Now Stripe is an awesome service where it basically allows you to put up a, a, a little bit of code online that will take credit card details and securely handle them for you so that you don't have to store them on your server. Now, the importance of that is basically it frees you up legally in all kinds of ways um, to be PCI compliant with bank services and that sort of thing is a very, very time consuming and costly affair. And if you want to bypass all of that and you just want to have someone else take care of the, the main legwork of doing that, then Stripe is awesome for you to do that. Now, <clears throat> the the thing that we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate how to how to take payment details at their point of registration from your user now what will happen during this particular demonstration is that we'll be taking in the name and email and password etc but we'll also be taking in a credit card number security code and an expir an expiration date and in the process of registering the client we're then going to send across and bill them for $4.99. Now you can see there I've already run some tests. So basically what we'll do is we'll fill in these forms at the end of the tutorial and then we should then be able to check uh, for a second payment, which we should see after this payment in the graph. So it should kind of elongate and shift that way. Um, so <clears throat> how do we get started? Well, the first thing we need to do is when we've created a brand new project um, is we need to install the modules. Now I've used the, the custom user that we created in the email authentication tutorial as a, a shortcut to actually get this set up. So I've got the module installed in my um, default installation of Django. And then I'm just going to basically add in one module. So normally when you create a, a brand new virtual environment, you would do pip install Django. But in our case, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a bit of a frog in my throat. In our case, we would also include Stripe. And that's basically enough of the modules that we need to actually get set up doing this from the command line. So once you've done that, you should have a working copy of, of uh, Django in there and then also the Stripe module to support what we're going to try and do. Now, I'm not going to take you through the whole creating a, a new project um, because that's you know something that you've possibly done a million times now through practice. And what I will do is I'll show you the project now that we've set it up once we've installed those modules. Um, I've literally cut and paste the custom user across so that we can use that in this demo because we're going to be using that to take the registration. But then we're also going to customize one of the views, which is the registration view, so that we can do the, the Stripe payments processing. <clears throat> I've also included the custom user in my installed apps section. And of course, the templates for the custom users have been included also. In addition to that, if we move down this tree here in the static folder with our well, static uh, files folder, I've included a JS folder with an app.js. And that's basically because to use Stripe, we need to use a little bit of client side JavaScript to actually do the whole uh, negotiation between the user's web browser and Stripe's service. And what will happen is that the, the information that they put into the credit card fields uh, will then be pulled when they click the um, validate credit card button. So what will happen is that JavaScript will pull out the values from the credit card, the security code and expiry date. It will send that off to Stripe securely, which totally bypasses our servers and thus makes us um, not responsible for P PCI compli compliance. Then it will wait for Stripe and then Stripe will send us back a token and the token or ID will be used by us uh, on the server side to complete the transaction and, and actually create a charge 
for the customer for their registration. So there's a bit, uh, a bit in of JavaScript going on on the client side that helps us out legally wise and also in connecting the customer with our service. But then we do a bit of server side to do the finalized pro payment processing section. So the JavaScript for that is in the app.js file. Now, <coughs> let's just take a look at some of the other stuff that's in here. Because we're using the Stripe um, module, we have in our settings just at the top here, a Stripe publishable and a Stripe secret. And these are two strings that you will get if you go into your Stripe dashboard and go into your account settings and on that, I'll just cancel that. Oh, that's not going to let me look at it. I don't. Under API keys, you will find um, two sets of keys. There are test keys and then there are live keys. Now I'm only using the test keys in this, pr this process because Obviously, I don't want to have to be able to pay for transactions. Um, not when I'm just demonstrating the service anyway. So in there, you'll need to cut and paste the test, secret and publishable keys. Now you can, you can either choose to do what I've done, which is basically set them up as part of my environment. And if you, you know, if you want to know how to do that, then there is, there is a, a section. Um, I think it was my Heroku um, deployment uh, tutorial that demonstrated how to pull information from the environment variables. So if you want to do that, you can set up those environment variables and then that will be specific to your offline development. And then once you deploy this code onto online, these environment variables will have different values. So they'll have your live values in. But we're pulling that information out of there and putting it into uh, a sentence constant. And then later, <clears throat> when we come to do the registration process, we'll pull those, pull those in and use those in the process of actually setting up our form and then using the Stripe secret to actually set up the Stripe module so that we can send a server side request across for, for a, a charge to the, the user's account. Okay, <clears throat> so that's our settings side of things done. Now, um, I think that probably the best place to go next is to actually look at the views inside of our customer. So we have the views here. Okay, so <coughs> we have, first of all, um, our bog standard register, register success, login, etc. But we've added an extra bit of code in here. Now, what does this do? Well, we're looking for the post of the registration form. And instead of just registering the customer, which you'll notice this line here and this line here is potentially the same as you would see in the normal registration setup, we've also additionally added a Stripe charge section. Now, we've surrounded this with try accept because uh, Stripe will raise an exception if it can't charge. And in that case, if it can't charge, we're going to use the form and add an error. Now, this is where it gets interesting because this method here is not the default method. We actually add that in. Now, if we go to forms, on our custom, custom user form, instead of just having a meta class in there normally, we'll, I've added in an extra method. And this method just basically allows us to add in to the non-field errors section of our errors array or list and get us the message and put it in there along with its class, so that we can display that on our form if there's a problem. So this method here, when you see that, it's not part of the default set, it's something I've added in extra because it seems a nice nifty way of being able to provide feedback to the user. So 
Hence, when we do this form add error, you won't get that on your bog standard form object. That's something I've added in. So we check basically, or we attempt to create a charge on the customer's account. Now to do that, we basically use the Stripe module, which we've imported here. So we import Stripe at the top. Before we use the model, rather the module, we need to uh, set the API key. And the API key is basically equivalent to our Stripe secret key that you would have pulled from your Stripe dashboard. So we basically import settings from Django Conf and pull that in and cause API underscore key to equal that value. And that initializes the Stripe module so that when we do this later call to Stripe charge dot create, it knows some information that will help it to authenticate itself with Stripe's account. And that will personalize it to our specific Stripe account so that when the charge happens, it doesn't get charged from the user and sent to someone else's um, bank account. It gets sent to ours, which is handy. So um, we're using Stripe here, obviously, to use the charge create method. We send in the amount, which is 499. Now, notice in the dashboard that says 4.99. We deal in units, so that's in cents in this particular case. If this was GBP, it would be um, in pence. If it was in yen, that yeah, it's different numbers. But we're we're dealing in ones only so when we mean when we want four dollars and 99 cents we put 499 in there no commas just the units the integer version and then obviously we've got the currency which is usd in this case then this is can be changed to whatever you want it could be gbp if you like um but i'm just going to stick with usd for the time being um <clears throat> although it's worth it worth noting that um, if you ever do uh, you know, set up a, a payment system of your own and the payments are coming to you, it's always best to charge in your own local currency. And the reason for that is that you will be charged um, for the transaction by the client, by the, the provider. So Stripe or somebody like PayPal, for instance, they will charge you. Um, but then they will also charge you whatever the exchange rate is as well. And that's probably not a great idea. So you don't want to pay twice. So if you can, always charge in your local currency. Okay, so the next thing is the description. And that is just basically us pulling out from the form the cleaned data version of the email address that's been posted through to us. And when that comes through, for instance, if we look at this, we get a description with the email address in. And that's from my previous test. Notice the, the difference in the transaction and how it's changed over. So I've charged in 499 US dollars and it's automatically converted it through to three pound 12. And that's because I'm in the UK. It knows that I'm in the UK and therefore automatically converts for us. Um, <clears throat> if I charged in pounds, that may well have not been such a, a difference. So going back, we have this variable here called card. Now, this is not the actual card number that you'll see on here. So on our form, we have a card number here. This is not the value that you'll get back. You'll get something else, which is a hidden key. And if I just show you under the hood on the HTML, inside of here, uh, where are we? Where are we? here somewhere maybe it's a bit further up there it is right in front of my eyes so as you can see it's a input 
called id underscore stripe underscore id which is the way that Django identifies fields its name is id its type is hidden so we won't see that on the form normally and its value is a token tok underscore and then a load of random letters and numbers which is generated by Stripe and that will symbolize the credit card values that are stored in Stripe's system because Stripe is basically able to, to be PCI compliant on its own and therefore does the, that part of the job for us but then returns us this token to symbolize the connection between the transaction that we're about to uh, attempt to, to do and the actual card de uh, owner's details. So we use that token here, which we pull out, form cleaned data, stripe ID, which then pulls out that information that we've been storing in that hidden input and puts it into there. Now, because we've called that there, stripe charge create, that will automatically call Stripe's web services with the relevant details and the amount to be charged. And if that's successful, then <clears throat> it will not raise this Stripe card error. And it will simply move on and then we complete our registration process. Now, that's the server side of things that we've done there. Now you can see that if if you compare that with the normal register kind of method that we would use then there's you know there's potentially only these lines here and these lines here that are different in the registration process and the rest is just what you would normally see in a registration system the only other things that we've added in are obviously the extra arguments that we need to actually set things up on the page now why do we need that? Well, we've got our CSRF um, token that we've built there so that it's not going to get uh, rejected by Django. We've got our form variable, which we do every single time anyway for a registration method. But this time we've got publishable, which is the publishable string that we've set up in our settings.py. And that will get pushed into there and used later in the JavaScript. Now I'm going to show you the client side things in, in a minute or two, but just to show you what we're passing through to the views um, so that when we get there, you'll got more of an understanding of what that is. So then we've got these three little things here. And what these, what these do is they allow us to then create the drop-down boxes on our page. So we've got these here. And these basically are a range of numbers from one to 11 and a range of numbers from 2011 to 2035, which are just basically what we're using for the years. And that's what's generated by the months and years range calls. The soon bit is just basically how we, you, how we um, indicate which one of these drop-down values is the nearest so we use the soon values to say, you know, pick the nearest year to us, which currently we're in 2013. So that's pretty much what that soon value does. And then we just passing it through and rendered into the register.html. So that's our server side of things done. And that's really just set up now just to take the values from the form that we've submitted. Now, um, if we go over into the register HTML template, we've got starting at the top, um, extends base HTML, and then we have a block head section. Now this is different from what we normally do because we normally just have a block content thing, but I've put a block head uh, section in there. The reason why I've done that is because um, when we're including JavaScript, we want to be able to push in the JavaScript in the head part of the document. So in our base HTML, we have in the head section, we've defined an empty block called head, 
which allows us to then insert extra JavaScripts that are only specific to that page. So for instance, we've got this in this kind of JavaScript inserted on the register HTML. If I go to the login, we don't. And therefore we have one view that does include all of that and one that doesn't. Now the, the usefulness of that is that when we do this, or rather this, you can see that it's pulled in various, oh, no, I haven't got the server running. Let's quickly run the server and I'll demonstrate that. There you go. Right, so then you've got all of this script being pulled in. The app script, the, J, the J, Stripe JS, and various other ones. Now that all takes network overhead, and if you're, you know, if you're coming to your home page and you're already loading in these scripts, but not actually use them, not using them on that page, probably not a good idea, because then you, you're loading in stuff through the network that doesn't need to be. So you're actually slowing down the load time of your page by including JavaScript that's not even used. So to get around that, we don't declare a head version uh, section inside of the login, but we do declare it on the register, which is basically the only page in the whole website that really needs to use Stripe. So in the head block, we pull in from JS dot stripe dot com v2 which is version 2 of their stripe api we just pull in that script there the next bit is that we create um, a bit of javascript that initializes stripe and this is not the server side version of stripe this is the javascript side of stripe so we are setting the publishable key to the value of the variable that we set in our view so we created that publishable variable here, which is just the contents of that uh, constant. And we push it in here. And then that will then set the JavaScript side up with a publishable, publishable key that will allow us to then access the Stripe web services and create um, a Stripe token that we can then post back to our servers. Then we pull in our static JS app.js file. And that's really the, the file that's going to do all the legwork of pulling out the values from the form and then sending off to Stripe and, and creating that new token. And we'll look at that a sec in a second. We just want to really quickly go through what's actually inside of this form. So we've got the form set up here which basically posts back to custom user views register, which is the view we've set here. And in there, we've got some field, non-field errors, or non -for, yeah, non-field errors. Now, when we do this whole putting in and add an error to the form, this will be added into the non-field errors because obviously it's not relevant to the fields of the, of the form. It's not relevant to any of these boxes here. It's actually just an error to say there was an error with the card. So we need to have an extra section and that's really how Django will allow you to, to pass non-field errors across is in that array, array there. Then after that, we put in our form field errors which are the ones that are relevant to the contents of the boxes on the page. Then we start building our form. So we've got the first field here, which is surrounded by a bit of markup so that it'll look nice and pretty along with our um, bootstrap CSS. But essentially what all that does is it creates um, an input called full name Again, if we move down, we've got another one that says email. And then after that, we've got the password. 
but then we want to include the form stripe ID. Now, why does the form have a stripe ID? Because when we look in the forms, this is a model form. Now, what we've done is we've created the model, which is a custom, custom user model, like we did in the previous tutorial, but instead of just having a full name and an email address, we've actually added in an extra part to it. So if I go into that model there, you can see that as well as the normal fields for the custom user model, we've got a Stripe ID. Now, what that'll do is it will save that Stripe token that we've been sent from Stripe into there. So if we ever need to make any additional charges to the customer or the client, we'll already have that saved in there. Now, PCI compliance basically means that you have to be super careful about storing people's card details. But if all we're doing is storing a Stripe ID, then as long as no one gets hold of our secret uh, Stripe uh, identification strings, then theoretically, we're pretty secure. So this is the reason why we should never really put this in code. So that should never really be in code as a hard string. It should be something that's specific to the box in the environment variables. So if even if somebody does log in and steals this code somehow, then they're not going to get themselves the Stripe ID or secret. Sorry. They're not going to get that without much of a fight. So that adds a, an extra layer of security to us. <clears throat> so in our models, we're storing that Stripe ID. And of course, it's included in the fields list as something that needs to be included in the form. Now, if we go back to the form, we've actually output it using the as hidden method on the form. And that basically tells the form to say to render this this normally um, char field field which would normally render the same as one of the other ones which would be a normal input box we're saying don't do it like that we want it rendered as a hidden field now the next bit is something that I added in you, you don't necessarily have to do this but I, I wanted to show you because we haven't really um, covered it in previous tutorials but if you've already got some other HTML that you want to keep separate and it's easier to manage in its own separate file you can just simply include it when you actually come to use other views so in this case I've created a stripe form which is more or less just the definition of these three sections here and the reason why I've done that is because that would make the Stripe form more specific. And if you choose not to use it, um, then all you need to do is really remove that from your registration for, uh, form. And then you can kind of more or less forget about it. So when we include this, we're actually including this file here. And it's a, a big chunk of HTML, which you may or may not find easy to read. I never find forms easy to read myself. Um, I think that I think a lot of people feel the pain when it comes to making forms. So if you're like me, then you're you're not alone in that one. <clears throat> what we've got are essentially uh, the credit card number and the CVV or the security code, which is um, that three digit number off the back normally, depending on which card company you've got. And then we've got um, these sec select boxes. So we've got for month in months, create an option. If the month is equal to the soon month, which we created in that soon variable, then create it as the selected one and same for years and we'll create the years now the reason why that is at one is because i messed around with, with it before it should say something along the lines of 11 i think and that's pretty much our extra fields now 
notice something about these fields. We have the credit card number, which has an ID, but unlike the normal forms, it doesn't have a name. So if we look on our register forms in the input there, for instance, on the password, we have a name. On the email, we have a name. On the full name section, we have a name. On these ones, we don't. We deliberately don't have a name attribute on these. And the reason for that is because if you don't put a name on, it won't be posted through to your server. So it will take all the values that do have a name attribute and post those in the post um, to your server's URL, but it will not send those. So we're deliberately leaving that out so that credit card details and expiry dates are not sent to our servers. And that's deliberate so that we don't have that information even, you know, even for a millisecond on our server. And that basically, <clears throat> that basically means that we are as safe as we can possibly be and we never actually ever handle the, the clients or the customer's credit card details. Okay, so just to run through that again, we do the whole um, filling in of the username, password, etc. on here. Then we come to the credit card section and then fill in the various details and click the validate card thing. Once we click that, we've set up some JavaScript that's actually going to do the whole processing and getting the token for us. So we need to take a look at that to show you how that works. Now, like I say, that's in here, this apps.js file. And it basically um, waits for a click or a submit on this button here. So <clears throat> we use a, a little bit of trickery to say on, on document ready, which is this little setup here. And if you haven't seen that way of doing it before, it's, it's the equivalent of, of sticking a, an on document ready kind of handler in there when you were doing jQuery. This is like the shorthand way of doing that. <clears throat> now, what it's basically saying is on document ready, if you can set up this particular um, observer on the form, which basically says that if the user form has a submit uh, event, then do the following function. And then we basically get a copy of the form, which is actually this, because that's the form we selected here. We create a card variable, or a card object rather, a bit of JSON anyway, um, containing the card number, the expiry month and the expiry year, and the CVV value, or the CVC value rather. That creates a little object that we can then use in the process of calling Skype, uh, Stripe, I nearly said Skype there, I don't mean. Um, we call Stripe with that to basically get the token. So here's our call to Stripe. Stripe create token with the card object and with a return or a handler function inside of here. Now what this does is it provides us with a status and a response and if the status is 200, which is a successful call over the web, um, we're going to drop out the status and the response into the console, which is in the browser. Um, and that's purely for debugging. You don't necessarily need that. You can kind of just delete that if you want. But then we hide any credit card errors, if there were any, because um, this might not be the first time we've attempted to post this information to Stripe. If there, were, if there are any errors, then they'll be created in the next section down here. And if we then, if they then re-enter the information, then that will then um, be righted and hidden. So any credit card errors will get be gotten rid of. Then we basically insert the Stripe ID, which is contained in the response.id. And that will fill up this section in our form. 
and it'll nope that's not the one there we are so it'll fill up that and it'll give it a value of something whatever stripe returns and then because it's been successfully created it will submit the form back which will then push everything through again back to our request um, view for handling here and then it'll val validate etc and do the charge and complete the registration process now just to note the reason why we do the charge first is because if you're registering a customer and the, you're charging for access to the website you want to make sure that you're able to charge them first if you can't charge them then they shouldn't get registered so therefore if we have um, a problem with that then we're just basically going to put out an error saying your card has been declined so the reason why we've done the charge first is because we want to charge them first before we actually register them because if we can't charge then that kicks in with our stripe card error exceptions handling and avoids registering a, a customer who hasn't paid so that's that part of the, the JavaScript there that just basically gets the ta gets the um, the token and puts it into the form for us. The next bit is if the status wasn't 200 and there was a problem, then we will then use the response error message to put into the Stripe error message text or HTML markup what the error was. So the user can get feedback and so that they can then adjust what's gone on. Right, so credit card errors, we will show that. And then finally, use user submit button is disabled. And that will get dis disabled on the register form, um, which is, here we are. So that's just our button. If we then wanted to extend extend that, sorry, we could wait to see if there are any changes in the form. And then once they've changed any values in here, we could then re-enable that button, but not until they've actually made some adjustments. Um, I'm not gonna go as far as doing that in this demo because that's kind of, well, not really important to what we're trying to accomplish right now. So, the next step is pretty much to actually just go and test it because that's pretty much everything that we need to do. So I'm just going to quit this and open it up back in the console because I want it to be able to run through the browser so I can step through the code. <coughs> so um, the view, I want to set a breakpoint just here. Okay. Then I want to just run the server. Okay. On the server side of things, I want to go into the sort uh, the server side, the client side of things. I want to be able to do this whole um debugging of the JavaScript side of things. So I've set a breakpoint in line 15, which should stop us just before we call the create token. And then I've set a breakpoint inside the handler to see what the response was, etc. before we actually submit back to the server. So let's just take that through. I'm gonna quickly fill in this form with some bump. Uh, the test number, <coughs> In the dashboard, you will find on the documentation embedded form gives you some information and it gives you, he has a test number that you can use and then any three digit CVC code and a valid expiry date. So anything that's got an expiry date after today's date. So 4242, 4242, 4242, 4242, and then 123 if you like, and then, I don't know, 
2004 and 2015. Okay, so we click that. Now that's already done this part of the code so far. So if I hover over that, we can see there it's taken in the information from the form. And if I just click go, it should come back after it's called away to the Stripe service with a response. And you can see there that there's a token inside of there. So the response ID part of this response object. So we're dropping that into the form. And if I just step over that once and look at the elements on the page, here we are. So then it's it's put it into the actual value section of there, which is exactly what we want. Now the next bit will shoot us over onto the service side because we now have the token. And here we are. And if we just step through there, it's a valid form. We're going to do the customer charge. It thinks about it for a while because it's calling the web service. That's come through. We we'll just hover over this. Then that looks like a captured true and the card etc has been accepted so with that we should then be able to go through to our payment section and there you have it that's our payment there that's just gone through and as you can see it's recorded all my details perfectly so there you go that's how to implement stripe payments using Django and a little bit of JavaScript to help it out on the client side and to keep you in the legal green, so to speak. Okay, well, thanks for watching. I hope this was instructional and if it was, then any feedback that you, you want to give would be great. And if you need any other assistance, then please just send us an email. You can see it on screen there under this description and I'll do the best I can to help you out. Thanks for watching.